Hello guys, it's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome to another Action and Thriller Month review. This one is going to be a negative one, so bear with me, please, in the comment section. Don't attack me. Just let me hear me out. This is my opinion. That's all I can give, not somebody else's. This is a 2022 American action thriller directed by Anthony and Joe Russo. Yes, the guys that made two of the best Captain America movies and the, the, the masterpiece uh, Infinity War and Endgame. And uh, this is their big movie after that. And it did not deliver. Same writers, too. Christopher Marcus and St Stephen McFeely, based on a 2009 novel of the same name, stars Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans, Anna de Armas, Jessica Henwick, Red J. John, Page, Wagner Mora, Julia Butters, Danush, Alfre Woodard, and Billy Bob Thornton. And uh, the film, and it's uh, The Gray Man, guys. Yeah, this, this freaking chaotic movie. On Netflix, I was disappointed with this movie because I'm like the Russos can do better than this. I know because they have done better than this. This let's read the synopsis quick so I don't have to be here for an hour. The film focuses on the CIA agent Sierra Six, who is on the run from a sociopathic ex CIA agent and mercenary Lloyd Hansen, that's Chris Evans, upon discovering corrupt secrets about his superiors, and that's the the plot in a nutshell. Very basic, very generic. And this movie's long. Like, it did not need to be... According to this, with the end credits, it's two hours and nine minutes. This movie easily could have been an hour and 40. It didn't need the extra 20 minutes. It just... After Chris Evans dies at the end, spoilers. There's going to be spoilers in here. Uh, the movie drags for, like, another 10 to 15 minutes and has, like, this four sappy ending where Chris, uh, where uh, Ryan Gosling, who's very stoic in the movie, he has, he uh, takes in Julia Butters, who's, you know, she's by herself... And she's like a 12-year-old girl. She's very cute, but she deserved better than this. And this movie bombed. They, they, they This movie got a limited release in theaters. And it was completely uh, disastrous. You know, it made $454,000. This is the Russos. This is not freaking Uva Bowl. These are guys that made history in the MCU four freaking times. And this is the best they can do afterwards. It's just sad. An adaptation was originally going to be announced in 2011, before the pandemic, with James Gray set to direct, I don't know who that is, Brad, Brad Pitt, and later Charlize Theron in a gender-swapped role, though neither version ever came to fruition. The property lingered for in developmental hell, no wonder this movie didn't do well, until July of 2020, when the pandemic happened, when it was announced the Russo brothers would direct, with Gosling and Evans attached to the starring. Filming began in Los Angeles in 2021, before wrapping in Prague in July of last year. With a production budget of $200 million, I don't know where the money went. The Russos were directing this like they were directing a freaking Marvel movie. And there's no superheroes in this movie. There's no Captain America in this movie. Because Chris Evans is a bad guy. Ryan Gosling's never been in a Marvel mo or DC movie yet. And uh, it's so chaotic. The action in this movie, that while there's a lot of it, it's just it's as chaotic as it was in Fast 9 last year. Where nothing makes sense, it, it defies the laws of physics. Ryan Gosling is hopping around on cars like he's freaking Super Mario. The debris, they cause more destruction than the guys in Fast and the Furious, the Transformers, and the Avengers combined. And it's just horrible. Like, I don't know what they were thinking with this nonsensical plot. Anna de Armas has nothing to do in this movie. She's not bad, Josh. It's just, I think that she's just wasted in this movie. She's just not smiling. She's just going through the motions. She was better in No Time to Die in her one scene. Jessica Henwick, I don't want to talk about her because you know why. And uh, I don't want to talk about the guy from Bringerton. He's there just to be there. They're there to just talk and yell. That's it. They don't serve a purpose. <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton's underused. Alfred Wilder's underused. It's the most expensive movie made by Netflix. And it doesn't look like a Netflix movie. It doesn't. It should look better than that. It got a limited release in July, followed by its digital release. It received mixed reviews. Yeah, trust me, the mix is, is, is putting it gently. The critics praise it for the ensemble cast. Yes, the cast, some of them are good What with what's given to them. Like, Evans is trying his hardest as a, a villain to make it work. But the dialogue they give him is horrible. Uh, and Ryan Gosling, he's, he's miscast here. He could be good in movies, Blade Runner 2049 and Drive, but here he's just... He's bored. He doesn't. He has no expression on his face. He he's so serious, and I'm like, he's not. He doesn't smile. He's just. He barely smiles. I'm tired of these lead actors that they put that are stoic 
and have no smile on their face, have no expression. Tom Holland can be expressive. Even when he's dramatic, he can at least cry, and you can see some emotion on his face. With Gosling in this whole movie, he's like this. No expression, just blank stare. And it got criticisms towards the cliche script and breakneck pacing, yeah. Uh, you know, it, the, the pacing is just all over the place. One minute there's a sitting down talking in a bad accent, and then the next, it, a building's getting destroyed or buses are getting destroyed. Shang-Chi did it better last year, and it was not chaotic. And I had a guy with a freaking sword for a hand or a hook for a hand. It was something like that. Excuse me. Anyway, the plot is very ho hum. If you've seen a bunch of Netflix movies or movies in the theater back in the 90s, the 2000s, and the 2010s, they're much better than this. And it says the film's going to be followed by a sequel, which I don't want to see. This first one sucked. And a spin off with who? Chris Evans' character before he turned evil? Unless you do it better, I don't want to hear about it. This is why Marvel actors should stay away from Netflix movies, because they're usually, except for Chris Hensworth, who scored with. Uh, Extraction, that was good. It was more realistic than this. It was R-rated. This is PG-13. There's barely any blood in the movie. Barely. They're destroying whole cities and, and there's no blood. And it was too much, man. Julia Butters played Claire and she was cute in the movie, but she's a little girl. She was the cute little girl from American Housewife. Uh, but, uh, you know, she can't save it. And there's no good cameos here. There's no post credit scene. There's nothing. It's just very underwhelming. And this is from the Russos. I was expecting some more. You can't do Endgame, the greatest superhero movie ever made and, and the biggest of all time, and then make this lower clique, this, this high budget disaster. I mean, th this movie was one, is in my, one of my worst of the year because it was so chaotic and nonsensical and it was just dumb. And the viewership was 88.55 million hours. Why? Are you people that bored that you will see anything on Netflix? Not me. I know my standards. And Rotten Tomatoes gave it a rotten. It deserved it. Because it's just too chaotic. And it, it, was, it was not for me. I gave it a shot. I sat, sat through the entire thing. And I was just looking at my watch saying, when is this going to be over? It was just too long. The Gray Man has a star-studded cast outline of an entertaining action thriller, but it's filled with lukewarm leftovers from far better movies. Exactly. Twelve Rounds. Shang-Chi. Freaking, uh, the Spider-Man 2. The chaos in this is more like Amazing Spider-Man 2, where the whole beginning after the plane crash is chaos on ice, and there's no consequences. Action, action sequences with no consequences, where they don't have to pay for their sins. The Avengers had to pay for that. All the cities that they that, that were destroyed because that you know the attacks that they had to defend the Earth from in in Age of Ultron and and uh, and freaking you know uh, the first Avengers movie and Winter Soldier and all that it came back to bite them in the ass in Civil War. Here it's like no Ryan Gosling could just get away from danger and never gets hurt, and I'm getting tired of that. Stop making your characters invincible. Plot armor is not good. When when your when your main character doesn't get hurt. Or doesn't take any damage, or or the Tom Cruise takes damage in every Mission Impossible movie. He never goes out of those movies without unscathed. He always gets at least a bloody nose, a busted head, or a car arm, or something. He's always bleeding from something in every one of these movies, or gets hit, or hit something hard. He's not Superman. Here, it just makes no freaking sense. I don't want the Russos to become the the Wachowskis. They're better than them. When you make four of the best Marvel movies, uh, you know, it, 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 you know some that made history, some of the most critically acclaimed films, and then you do Cherry and this, no, you gotta go back to the drawing board. I hope to God that uh, Knives Out and 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 uh, what was it? What the one? What is it called? Glass Onion. I hope it's not like this. I know those are not action movies; they're mysteries. They gotta be less chaotic than this. Don't waste an ensemble cast again, because Chris Evans was in that in the first Knives Out. It has got to be better. Because, like I said, this is not, there is no excuse for this. These are the Russos. They can do good stuff. Their writers need to stop tr pretending that every movie they make is a Marvel movie. That era is over. You can move on now. Stop wasting $200 million on a, on a generic plot. That's why I'm not seeing Avatar 2, because it's going to be the same thing. 
generic plot, bit pro, pretty CGI. Whoopty freaking do. Here, the CG is just there. It looks chaotic. Put put this movie on and tell me it's not even you don't think it's Fast Nine or one of the Transformers sequels. It's the same destruction scenes. I've seen it. There's 80s and 90s movies from Canon and EPM Entertainment that are better than this that I've seen that are not as chaotic. And they have consequences. Somebody dies, gets hurt, or they get arrested. There are always consequences. And to make a bad movie like this, I give it a thumbs down. It's a disappointment. It could have been much better. Because I know the Russos can do better than this. The, the writers can do better than this. But anyway, that's my rant on The Gray Man. It sucked. It could have been better. Thanks for watching. Take care. And hopefully I'll see you in the next review.